a band active between 1975 and 1990, whose core membership consisted of Alan Parsons and Eric Wolfson. They were accompanied by a varying number of session musicians and some relatively consistent session players such as guitarist Ian Berenson. Arranger Andrew Powell, bassist and vocalist David Payton, drummer Stuart Elliott and vocalist Lenny Zakatek and Chris Rainbow. Parsons was an audio engineer and producer by profession, but also a musician and a composer. A songwriter by profession, Wolfson was also a composer, a pianist, and a singer. Almost all the songs on the project's albums are credited to Wolfson slash Parsons. The Alan Parsons Project released 11 studio albums in its 15-year career, including the successful I, Robot and I in the Sky. Some of their most notable songs are The Raven, Dr. Tar and Professor Feather, I Wouldn't Want to Be Like You, Games People Play, Time, Snake Eyes, Serious, I in the Sky, Old and Wise, and Don't Answer Me. Alan Parsons met Eric Wolfson in the canteen of Abbey Road Studios in the summer of 1974. Parsons acted as assistant engineer on the Beatles' albums Abbey Road and Let It Be, engineered Pink Floyd's The Dark Side of the Moon, and produced several acts for Emmy Records. Wolfson, a songwriter and composer, was working as a session pianist while composing material for a concept album based on the work of Edgar Allan Poe. Wolfson's idea was to manage Allen and help his already successful production career. This was the start of their long-standing friendly business relationship. He managed Parsons' career as a producer and engineer through a string of successes, including Pilot, Steve Harley, Cockney Rebel, John Miles, Al Stewart, Ambrosia, and The Hollies. Wolfson came up with the idea of making an album based on developments in the film industry. The focal point of the film's promotion shifted from film stars to directors such as Alfred Hitchcock and Stanley Kubrick. If the film industry was becoming a director's medium, Wolfson felt the music business might well become a producer's medium. Recalling his earlier Edgar Allan Poe material, Wolfson saw a way to combine his and Parsons' talents. Parsons produced and engineered songs written and composed by the two, and the first Alan Parsons project was begun. The project's first album, Tales of Mystery and Imagination, released by 20th Century Fox Records and including major contributions by all members of Pilot and Ambrosia, was a success, reaching the top 40 in the U.S. Billboard 200 chart. The song The Raven featured lead vocals by the actor Leonard Whiting. According to the 2007 remastered album Liner Notes, this was the first rock song to use a digital vocoder, with Alan Parsons speaking lyrics through it, although others such as Bruce Hack pioneered this field in the previous decade. Arista Records then signed the Alan Parsons project for further albums. Through the late 1970s and early 1980s, the project's popularity continued to grow. However, the project was always more popular in North America, Ibero-America, and continental Europe than in Parsons' home country, never achieving a UK Top 40 single or Top 20 album. The singles I Wouldn't Want to Be Like You, Games People Play, Damned If I Do, Time and I in the Sky had a notable impact on the Billboard Hot 100. Don't Answer Me became the project's last successful single in the United States, it reached the top 15 on the American charts in 1984. After those successes, however, the project began to fade from view. There were fewer hit singles, and declining album sales. 1987's Gothi would be the project's final release, though it had planned to record an album called Freudiana Next. The musical Freudiana even though the studio version of Freudiana was produced by Parsons, it was primarily Wolfson's idea to turn it into a musical. While Parsons pursued his own solo career and took many session players of the project on the road for the first time in a successful worldwide tour, Wolfson went on to produce musical plays influenced by the project's music. Freudiana, Gothi, and Gambler were three musicals that included some project songs like Eye in the Sky, Time, Inside Looking Out, and Limelight. The live music from Gambler was only distributed at the performance site in Mönchengladbach, Germany. The Sicilian Defense in 1979, Parsons, Wolfson, and their record label Arista, had been stalled in contract renegotiations when the two submitted an all-instrumental album tentatively titled The Sicilian Defense. Named after an aggressive opening move in chess, arguably to get out of their recording contract. Arista's refusal to release the album had two known effects, the negotiations led to a renewed contract, and the album was not released at that time. The Sicilian Defense was our attempt at quickly fulfilling our contractual obligation after I Robot, Pyramid, and Eve had been delivered. The album was rejected by Arista, not surprisingly, and we then renegotiated our deal for the future and the next album, The Turn of a Friendly Card. 
the Sicilian Defense album was never released and never will be, if I have anything to do with it. I have not heard it since it was finished. I hope the tapes no longer exist. Alan Parsons in interviews he gave before his death in 2009, Wolfson said he planned to release one track from the Sicilian album, which in 2008 appeared as a bonus track on a CD reissue of the Eve album. Sometime later, after he had relocated the original tapes, Parsons reluctantly agreed to release the album and announced that it would finally be released on an upcoming project box set called the Complete Albums Collection in 2014 for the first time as a bonus disc. Parsons released titles under his name, these were Try Anything Once, On Air, The Time Machine, A Valid Path and The Secret. Meanwhile, Wolfson made concept albums titled Freudiana, about Sigmund Freud's work on psychology, and Poe, or Tales of Mystery and Imagination, this continued from the Alan Parsons Project's first album about Edgar Allan Poe's literature. Tales of Mystery and Imagination was remixed in 1987 for release on CD, and included narration by Orson Welles recorded in 1975, but delivered too late to be included on the original album. For the 2007 deluxe edition release, parts of this tape were used for the 1976 Griffith Park Planetarium launch of the original album, the 1987 remix, and various radio spots. All were included as bonus material. The band's sound is described as progressive rock, art rock, progressive pop, and soft rock. Sirius is their best known and most frequently heard of all Parsons slash Wolfson songs. It was used as entrance music by various American sports teams, notably by the Chicago Bulls during their 1990s NBA dynasty. It was also used as the entrance theme for Ricky Steamboat and pro wrestling of the mid-1980s. In addition, Sirius is played in a variety of TV shows and movies including the BBC series Record Breakers, the episode Vanishing Act of the Adventures of Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius and the 2009 film Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Vocal duties were shared by guests to complement each song. In later years, Wolfson sang lead on many of the group's hits, including Time, I in the Sky, and Don't Answer Me. The record company pressured Parsons to use him more, However Parsons preferred to use polished proficient singers, Wolfson admitted he was not in that category. In addition to Wolfson, vocalists Chris Rainbow, Lenny Zakatek, John Miles, David Payton, and Colin Blunstone are regulars. Other singers, such as Arthur Brown, Steve Harley, Gary Brooker, Dave Terry aka Elmer Gantry, Vitamin Z's Jeff Baradale, and Marmalade's Dean Ford, recorded only once or twice with the project. Parsons sang lead on one song through a vocoder and backing on a few others, including To One in Paradise. Both of those songs appeared on Tales of Mystery and Imagination. Parsons also sings a prominent counter-melody on time. A variety of session musicians worked with the Alan Parsons Project regularly, contributing to the recognizable style of a song despite the varied singer lineup. With Parsons and Wolfson, the studio band consisted of the group pilot, with Ian Berenson, David Payton and Stuart Tosh. Pilot's keyboardist Billy Lyle contributed. From Pyramid onward, Tosh was replaced by Stuart Elliott of Cockney Rebel. Berenson played on all albums, and Payton stayed almost until the end. Andrew Powell appeared as a ranger of orchestra on all albums except Vulture Culture, he was composing the score of Richard Donner's film Ladyhawk. This score was partly in the app style, recorded by most of the app regulars, and produced and engineered by Parsons. Powell composed some material for the first two project albums. For Vulture Culture and later, Richard Cottle played as a regular contributor on synthesizers and saxophone. Alan Parsons Live Project, Congress Centrum, Ulm, Germany In 2017 the Alan Parsons Project played Live Only Once under that name during its original incarnation because Wolfson and Parsons held the roles of writing and production. And because of the technical difficulties of reproducing on stage the complex instrumentation used in the studio. In the 1990s, Musical production evolved with the technology of digital samplers. The one occasion the band was introduced as the Alan Parsons Project in a live performance was at the Night of the Proms in October 1990. The concerts featured all project regulars except Wolfson, present behind the scenes, while Parsons stayed at the mixer except for the last song, when he played acoustic guitar. Since 1993, Alan Parsons continues to perform live as the Alan Parsons Live Project to be distinct from the Alan Parsons Project. The current lineup consists of lead singer PJ Olson, guitarist Jeffrey Coleman, drummer Danny Thompson, keyboardist Tom Brooks, bass guitarist Guy Erez, vocalist and saxophonist Todd Cooper, and guitarist and vocalist Dan Tracy. In 2013, 
Alan Parsons Live Project played Columbia with a full choir and orchestra as Alan Parsons Symphonic Project. A two CD live set and a DVD version of this concert were released in May 2016. Thanks for watching.